Hello everyone and welcome to this mini course of the project IGCP667 Warm Up of the Origins. In this lecture, I will talk about the Rodinia amalgamation, specifically about the evidence that there is in the Andean basement involved in the construction of the supercontinent. First, we are going to define a supercontinent as the result of the inner relation of tectonic processes and convective mental processes. A supercontinent is understood to be a landmass that comprises at least 75% of the continental crust available at any given time. A supercontinent must have existed at least about 100 million years. During the last 2 billion years, three supercontinent cycles have been identified. From the most recent to the oldest, we have Pangaea, Rodinia, and Columbia. Before 2 billion year, years, the existence of more supercontinents is still uncertain. In this talk, we are going to focus on Rodinia. Rodinia was a meso to neoproterozoic supercontinent. The orogenic events of the Rodinia assemblage occurred between 1300 to 1200 million years and 1000 to 900 million years, and the collisions took place around Laurentia. On the Rodinia map, we are going to concentrate on this sector where Amazonia, Laurentia, and Baltica were located. This slide presents the most accepted positions of Laurentia. Baltica and Amazonia were in the supercontinent of Rodinia, just when it is considered uh, that the continent was fully assembled. Uh, the interactions between Amazonia, Laurentia, and Baltica are supported by paleomagnetic isotopic data and geological evidence, such as the correlation of orogenic belts. The Grenville age orogenic belts located at the margins of these cretonic blocks are shown in yellow in the figure. For instance, in Amazonia, we have the Sunsas Aguape. We have a diagram showing the general phases of the orogenic cycle. From a stable continent, a continental break takes place to initiate a rifting stage. In this area, the opening of an ocean basin occurs that allows the continental landmass to separate. While this process of creating oceanic cross happens, elsewhere the continental masses approach and subduction begins. A process in which the denser lithospheric plate sinks under the adjoining plate and thus the previously generated oceanic crust is destroyed. Uh, this causes the ocean basin to be consumed and magmatism and of course metamorphisms are produced. Later, the land uh, masses collide, uh, generating the formation and metamorphism as well as thickening of the crust. We finally have a collapse and erosion. For the interactions of Laurentia, Amazonia, and Baltica in the framework of the Rodinia assembly, there are two collisional hy collision hypotheses. The Amazonia Baltica a collision hypothesis and the Samba hypothesis. For the first one, an oblique, collision, an oblique collision between Amazonia and Laurentia in the Mesoproterozoic is proposed. From this scenario, it can be inferred that the collision first took place in this sector and then there was a sinistral strike slip displacement between uh, two craters. The approach of Amazonia and Baltica will be caused by the subduction uh, in their margins and therefore the closure of the Miroboi, Miroboi Ocean, uh, which put us uh, at this moment in the orogenic cycle. For this sector, paleomagnetic and geological data indicate that Baltica uh, was adjacent to Laurentia. However, later Baltica rifted away from Laurentia during the Mesoproterozoic, causing the rotation of this corical nucleus. 
around 1.05 to 1.02 billion years, Amazonia and Baltica are even closer together thanks to the separation of Baltica, the Sea of Asgard open, opens. Then we have the collision. Uh, then we have the collision stage that allows us to reach the configuration that we have already seen. At about one billion year, Baltica reached its final position within Rodinia. Samba is an alternative model for the inter interaction between Laurentia, Baltica, and Amazonia. In this model, it is proposed that Amazonia and Baltica never collided during the Meso to Neoproterozoic. In this sector, we have subduction eh, and a creation of blocks. Eh, this places us in this stage uh, of the, the orogenic cycle. In the figure, we can also see the approach of the continental masses and in this sector, in this sector, the rift and subsequent opening of the Asgard Sea. This scenario culminates on the continental collision along the Sunsa's Greenville margin to reach uh, the most accepted setting. In this reconstruction, we see the interactions between Amazonia. Baltica and Laurentia, but now we are going to concentrate on the record of this interaction in the Andes in South America. Let us remember that uh, the Amazonian Kraton was the nucleus from which South America uh, began to form. The Kraton is located in this sector. This map from South America presents the Greenville ages, ages related to the Rodinia assemblage uh, found in the Andes. Various authors using uh, the uranium lead system obtained the ages. These ages are observed in the image with the number and highlighted in bold. But they are also represented by a major detrital or inherited component within Neoproterozoic to Paleozoic sedimentary and magmatic rocks, as observed in the probability age histograms obtained from areas where the Grumbillian basement is not exposed. To better understand uh, where they are and how the Grumbillian ages of Western South America were generated, we are going to group them by sectors. The first ages uh, that we find are located within this polygon uh, that was proposed as the autochthonous margin. In this sector, uh, that what we see are orogenic belts developed in the western margin uh, of Amazonia related to these interactions. Highlighted in green, we have uh, the Greenville age basement terrains that are uh, widely distributed in South America. They form a nearly continuous bulk along the western margin from Colombia to Paragonia. The green star highlights uh, Venezuela. Here, recent research works have reported Greenvillian ages of basement, of basement metamorphism. In blue, we have the Laurentian Grenvillian terrains that were later left in South America when the Pangaea breakup happened. To view the details of terrains with Grenvillian ages, we will first review the terrains of Laurentic or Gondwanian, or Gondwanian uh, affinity that amalgamated along the Terraustralis origin. This uh, is the paleogeographic reconstruction of the Rodinia uh, disassembly and the Gondwana constitution. In this image, we see Gondwana in detail. In pink, we have, we have the crayons that join to form Gondwana, and in green, the origins, product of the collisions. South America is highlighted in aquamarine. The Terraustralis origin of Neoproterozoic to late Paleozoic age was generated along this active continental margin, thanks to the creation of a series of blocks. In yellow, we have the distribution of the Terraustralis origin. In this approach to the sector where South America is located, 
we see that the Terra Australis origin is made of uh, various terrains, some pre-autochthonous and other exotic, marked in orange. We will review these terrains uh, quickly below. From north to south, we first find the Chipcha and Paracas terrains. This uh, is a reconstruction of the Gondwana margin in the early Paleozoic before the other lands were accreted uh, in this sector of South America. In pink, we see the Paleozoic basement, and in black, uh, the Precambrian basement in layers. The Chipcha terrain collided against Gondwana during the constitution of Rodinia and later on detached from Gondwana to collide it back in the early Paleozoic times. The Grenvillian outcrops in this terrain correspond, correspond to rock exposures of medium to high grade uh, of metamorphism. The Paracas terrain is recognized as parautochthonous and it is believed that collided during the early or the Ovician period against the Gondwana margin. Going down to the south, we find the Arequipa and Antofaya terrains. Arequipa has been considered as an exotic terrain to the to Amazonia or parautochthonous as in this model. Uh, Arequipa was trapped during the collision between Laurentia and Amazonia in the Mesoproterozoic. In this terrain, we find a uh, Grenvillian ages in high grade metamorphic rocks, such as those of the Kilka Mugendo region. The Antofaya uh, terrain comprises basement rocks exposed in northwestern Anger, Argentina and northern Chile. The basement is believed to be different from that of the Arequipa segment. Further south, we find the Pampia, Famatinia, and Cuyania. A Pampia is a block accredited to Amazonia during the Sunsa's origin. The trial circumstances studies a yielded conspicuous a Grenvillian age peaks. Famatinia is a part of Tocturnus block accredited to the continental margin in Ordovician times. In this terrain, there are also inherited Grenvillian ages. Uh, the basement of Cuyania is composed of Grenville rocks. Its derivation from Laurentia is supported by biostratigraphic, isotopic, chronological, paleomagnetic, and structural data. Cuyania was amalgamated during Middle Ordovician times. Chilenia uh, is a terrain located to the west of Cuyania. Here we see rocks that reveal the suture. The Grenvillian nation in this terrain are concentrated in this sector of Argentina, where high grade metamorphic rocks are exposed. Like Cuyania, Chilenia is considered to have a Laurentic affinity. This terrain is believed to have been accredited to Gondwana during late Devonian. And lastly, we find the Paragonia terrain. This terrain detached during the Rodinia breakup was finally reaccredited to Gondwana during Permian times. In this area, there are two magmatic metamorphic belts, which were interpreted interpret as a late Paleozoic magmatic arts. The northern area, exposing the Somun Kuna Massif, has a magmatic and metamorphic belt with typical Grenville age inherited circles. Uh, the southern area, exposed in the Deseado Massif, has metamorphic rocks with inherited circles between 1060 and 1000 million years. In addition to the terrains related to Terra Australis, uh, inherited Grenvillian ages are also found in late Paleozoic to Triassic or even Jurassic metamorphic terrains, which are located further west. Uh, this is the case of the Tahami and Tawin terrains. Uh, these are believed to have been transferred to Gondwana after the Pangaea breakup uh, from the Laurentian site. This image is a close up of the Northern Andes to evaluate the characteristics and composition of the Gondwana conjugate margin preserved in South America 
prior to the constitution of Pangea. For this reason, some blocks that today are part of South America have been eliminated. The image allows us to see uh, those basement blocks made of uh, medium to high grade metamorphic rocks located to the west of accreted blocks uh, in the early Paleozoic, such as uh, the Chipcha terrain already mentioned. I would like to close this short talk with a final message that summarizes what was presented. This is the geological map of South America, which was uh, published in 2019 from the CGMW, the Colombian Geological Survey, and the Geological Survey of Brazil. In this map, we highlight the Andes. Uh, since I talk about this sector in this mini course, the data presented today allows us to identify that in the Andes, some basement in layers present strong Grenville affinities. Ages of metamorphism around uh, 1300 to 900 million years. In places where the basement uh, is not exposed, the trial or inherited circles also show this signature. These ages, together with geological, isotopic, and paleomagnetic evidence, prove the participation of the western uh, margin of, of Amazonia and other terrains attached to the margin of Gondwana in the assembly of Rodinia. Uh, these are the main reference words that I use for the preparation of this mini course. And this is my introduction and contact information. I would like to thank the leaders of the IGCP 667 project for this opportunity. Thank you very much.